Our final speaker is uh, last but not, but very, very far from least, Chris Matalko. He is the full-time second deputy general secretary of the South African Communist Party, the general secretary of the Friends of Cuba Society, and a member of the South African Peace Initiative. Chris, please go ahead. Uh, no, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Radica, and also uh, I'm very, I'm very glad to be a part of this uh, platform and uh, to exchange ideas, uh, but also to begin to contribute towards a platform that can see us um, do important um, joint activities, mobilization, and other things that can uh, get us moving forward with these matters. Uh, in fact, uh, what we will try and do is just to flag a few things because I think the uh, majority of the speakers that spoke before us um, and also thank you for your contributions you've made. You have laid a very important foundation to you know just to plug a few points uh, that we think we must flag. <clears throat> um, the ongoing Russia's military incursion in the Ukraine has solicited in our estimation varying interpretations of views across the globe. Uh, and a lot of effort has been put into seeking to formulate a particular narrative in support of the United States and NATO positions in this regard. We want to argue that uh, the goal for genuine and enduring peace must not be sacrificed at the altar of the falsification of history and geography. In fact, Africa's positions have been soiled and presented among other things, as a nostalgia for the Soviet Union's support for national liberation struggles, and that this is the primary reasons why we support uh, Russia in this regard, and have been positive as why a group of African countries not supporting the United Nations resolution was disproportionately high in this forum. However, there is a common thread running through all of these presentations. Uh, Russia's struggle in the Ukraine is proving to be, in our estimation, a proxy war of NATO against Russia. This is also true for interpretations and positions of most of the African continent states and their voting on the matter in the United Nations uh, forum. Almost all of the so-called think tanks, institutes, and others on the continent who are wholly funded by the European Union, the Open Society Foundation, the National Endowment for Democracy, the Democracy Fund, the governments of the US and Europe have embarked on a disinformation campaign seeking to portray Russia as harboring Cold War and Soviet era ambitions and sentiments, including in how it relates to the African continent. Russia's growing influence, we want to argue, does not only rely on its historic ties and relations between some countries on the continent and their relationship with the uh, former Soviet Union. Russia, it must be remembered, has over the years sought to cultivate deeper ties uh, and relations with the African continent. In fact, in 2019, the first Russia-Africa summit was held in Sochi, where various agreements were entered into leading to the deepening trade and other relations, including expanding uh, arms trade. This, among other things, also coincided with the changing geopolitical dynamics across the globe. BRICS, among other things, also brings together Brazil, Russia, uh, India, and China, and later on incorporated South Africa, shares common perspectives of multipolarity and the promotion of inclusive, equitable, and representative multipolar international system with the United Nations at its center, based on international law and purposes and principles of the United Nations Charter. And this resonates, uh, we want to argue, with many across the globe. And, uh, these struggles uh, and the struggles that are waging for a better world for all. In fact, BRICS is an important plank for the ongoing activization and mobilization of the non-aligned movement uh, around its founding ideals. We've also been told, among other things, that uh, the Ukraine has withdrawn from an important continental peace keeping force. Uh, from the United Nations Organization Stabilization Mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in MONUSCO, to defend their homeland. Accordingly, this move, uh, according to 
the major the mainstream outlet symbolizes wider implications and concerns of Europe and how Europe will treat Africa as it confronts the going threat from Russia as it started on the 25th, 24th of February. However, we want to argue that not much is said and insisted upon of the sovereignty and dignity from the insidious role of the former colonizer, the interventionist US imperialism and militaristic consequences of NATO and Africa, which over the past years, lasting the entire period of the independence of the continent has never contributed to anything other than instability, war, devastation, misery, poverty, and indignity to the vast majority of the people of the continent. In fact, the resultant migrations to Europe and elsewhere and the unnecessary deaths occurring in the process of crossing the Mediterranean seas should be put squarely at the door of the United Nations, the EU, and NATO. Even after contributing in large part to the overthrow and the breakup of Libya, as it has been mentioned earlier on, towards the devastation and the bloody death of Muammar Gaddafi in Libya, the Rand Corporation, which is a, a, an important um, uh, federal government <clears throat> funded research and development center, continues to assert that the increasing prominence of NATO's Mediterranean initiatives such as greater degree of unity and coherence that actually exists. Close quote. Today, Libya is a wrecked country at war with itself because those who sought to increase their profits realized their goals and their interests are still intact. The weaponization of international relations has been in the making uh, and is increasing its intensity since the imminent rise of China and other blocks of trade uh, economic concentrations, which are outside of the orbit of influence of the United States and has unleashed acute militarism and hybrid wars on the US and across the globe for dominance and hegemony as we have had from uh, um, even Latin America, Ron, uh, Carlos Ron uh, explicitly told us about that influence in Latin America um, and elsewhere. The Europe's uh, conjunctural relations with the continent remain in the main, in the realm of migration and security. This is also amplified uh, by Boris Johnson's uh, uh, recent ranting, his proposals for dealing with the migration matter and suggesting there's an agreement between themselves and Rwanda. We think this further compounds and it dilutes the problem of dealing with uh, the objective question of racism and the consequences that have created uh, migration. Migrants who in the main uh, happen to be poor, non-European, will be further humiliated as they are sent to Rwanda. This implies the UK, among other things, is determined not only to approach the matter through uh, its racist prison, but also refuse to accept the responsibility in this regard. As part of a signatory of many other conventions, uh, United uh, Nations uh, um, uh, units and other things. Today, we stand at the crossroads. Indeed, leading developmental, developing imperialist nations are seeking to lead others into a new Cold War. In the main, against the People's Republic of China, the Russian Federation, and the evolving alternative societies across the world. And we need to counter that. We must wage a concerted struggle to defend, deepen and advance our agenda. An alternative world is possible and necessary. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Radiga. I'm Michael Hudson. I'm appearing here for the International Manifesto Group. If you like this video and want to like it, please subscribe. For more information, go to the address on the screen.